The NOSA Sprints attempt to take their show on the road. How's everybody doing? I'm Jay Elson, and this is Midco Motorsports. Well, last week was supposed to be the busiest week of the season for the Northern Outlaw Sprint Association. The second annual Mindac Summer Swing aimed to complete four races in three states over four days. Unfortunately, thanks to Mother Nature, only half of that actually happened. The recap is this week's A Feature. Rain threatened all night Thursday at Norman County Raceway, although none actually fell. The Inex legends led things off. Glendon, Minnesota's Andrew Jokum led the first handful of laps from the front row, but a mistake in turns three and four allowed both Brody Karlsrud and Ty Wilkie to slide ahead on the inside. Those two would stay within a couple of car lengths of each other throughout the race, but Wilkie maintained the lead. He picks up his second win of the year at Norman County. 14 cars in the starting grid for the night's NOSA Sprint feature, including last year's winner, Wade Nygaard, on the pole. Mark Dobmeyer started fourth, but quickly slides into second with a strong move in turn one. Dynamite kept the 9N in his sights from there, pulling as close as one car length, but Nygaard held his line on a dry and slick surface, pulling away for his second NOSA victory of the season. Dobmeyer settled for second, while Thomas Kennedy came home third. Uh, it started laying rubber late in the uh, heat races, so we pretty much knew what we were going to get. Um, planned for it, and then uh, it was lucky that we started on the front row, so uh, we didn't have to work too hard to, to uh, get the position. But uh, yeah, we were just kind of worried about tires at the end, worried about fuel. It was kind of a long race there at the end. So. From there, Nygaard and company moved on to River Cities and the Greater Grand Forks Fair. Street Stocks also part of the show, which aired live on Midco SN and a good front row fight between Tucker Peterson and Trey Hess. Peterson managed to hold off Hess for the first six circuits, but the four car finally completes the pass with eight to go. Hess's job wasn't done yet, though. John Halverson rotting some momentum as he moves into second after starting seventh. Halverson did his best to chase down Hess after that, but he ran out of time. Hess holds on for his first career win at the legendary Bull Ring. Closest I ever came to winning here, it came on my birthday a couple years ago. I set the closest finish here and barely got edged out by Johnson, so this is awesome. Kelsey Peterson led the lightning sprints to green on Friday. The field would continue to chase her. Peterson wasn't seriously challenged until lap 14. Alex Trusinski took a run at her and turns one and two but the 93 eliminates the threat, and she would cruise home from there. Kelsey Peterson, now a two-time winner on Midco Sports Network. Yeah, it's exciting, you know, the way that it seems to work out every time. I love running here at the fair. It brings out a great crowd, and just getting to run at home the few times that I do a year really means a lot. That meant it was time for the NOSA Sprints, and boy, did they deliver. Pretty clear who had the car dialed in at the start. Jade Hastings up two spots to third, off the green flag, but his climb didn't end there. Five laps in, Hastings picks off pole setter Nick Ranton for the lead. Unfortunately, it was all downhill from there for the Ranton family. Lap nine, red flag comes out for Nick's brother Chris as his 27 machine takes a hard tumble in turn two. Fortunately, Chris was able to climb out of the wreckage unharmed. Just three laps later though, Nick follows suit, end over end in turn one. He was a little woozy, but otherwise okay. There'd be a few more cautions before this thing was over, which meant extra chances for some of the big guns to catch Hastings. Nygaard and Dobmeyer in particular, although their best racing was reserved for second. Neither guy able to reel in the youngster as Hastings weathers the storm to collect his second straight feature win in Grand Forks. We really weren't turning in any good finishes to start the year in our first five attempts. and We needed to turn it around and it was up to me to do it. My guys are doing everything they can and I just, I gotta drive the balls off this thing every time I get in it and uh, we've been good. I mean, we had a little bit of a screw up last night in Ada, but last two times here we put in victory lane against some really good competition, so it feels good. Brian, Sean, Chris Shearick here at River City Speedway in Grand Forks, the third straight year we're able to televise live dirt track racing on Midco SN from this legendary bullring. And Chris, a fun night of racing all the way around. You could really start with this 
the street stocks, went up to the lightning sprints. We saw a good race at the top there. And then the Gnosis sprints, we saw all sorts of racing going on. Yeah, the uh, the first two the first two races kind of kind of set the bar, and then the sprint cars came out, and they were throwing slide slide job haymaker after slide job haymaker. Fun to see Trey Hess pick up his first ever win here in street stocks. Led all 15 laps, never had any cautions. Kelsey Peterson yep. in the lightning sprints did a tremendous job. But really, it was the Gnosis sprint car feature. We saw slide jobs from Mark Dobmeyer, Austin Pierce. Wade Nygaard and Jade Hastings was able to hold on. Yeah, when uh, with all those slide jobs, Jade kind of pulled away, and and once they all kind of got strung out again, uh, lap traffic came into into play on the last lap, and and Jade picked the right line, and and he uh, he picked the bottom, and it worked. It was a lot of fun. We're glad to bring it to you once again. Your Hastings winners: Jade Hastings, Kelsey Peterson, and Trey Hess. <laughs> Drivers on the Gnosis Sprint Series have been chasing Wade Nygaard for years, but we were fortunate enough to catch him earlier this week. We'll share that conversation when Midco Motorsports rolls on. Midco Motorsports on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Speedway. Wade Nygaard is to the Gnosis Sprint Circuit what Donnie Schatz is to the World of Outlaws. That's probably not a fair comparison, but Nygaard's 10 series championships certainly can't be ignored. Midco SN's Jeremy Klein caught up with Nosa's reigning King in the North. Thanks for joined by Wade Nygaard. Wade, thanks for bringing us into your racing palace here and letting us stop by for a little bit. Sure, glad to have you. Uh, pretty successful season so far for you guys. It's early, but picked up a win at Devil's Lake and a win at Norman County Raceway. How would you rate the success from your squad so far this year? Uh, I'd say it's actually been pretty average. Um, we've uh, had a few flaws with driver uh, error. We've had a few flaws with setting up the race car, but that's all part of it. Um, uh, hopefully uh, we can keep up uh, some, get, get some more wins and keep up uh, keeping it on four wheels. That's a, that's a big thing out of, that, out of it too. So. Well, wins have not been hard to come by for yourself at Norman County Raceway. Your seventh win at, at that race track this past weekend. What is it about that track that allows you to get so much success? Well, like I always say there, it's a lot of luck. Uh, it, that racetrack tends to be a little bit more of a one-lane racetrack, but uh, if you can get through the heat races and get some points uh, uh, and get yourself in position to start up front, and then you just kind of go from there and uh, uh, save your tires and um, you know try not to make any mistakes. Uh, we showed good speed last time we were there. Um, uh, we actually stretched it out a little bit on restarts and during the race. Um, but like if we started, if we were running second, it would have been hard to pass the leader. Uh, just like it was hard for the second place car to pass us. So um, a, little, a lot of luck and, and we do have a good race car there. So You were a pretty busy guy this past weekend. You also raced at River City Speedway on Friday. The fair, we were there, great, great racing there. Where does that rank for you, Grand Forks person racing at River City Speedway with a fair all involved? Where does that kind of rank on your list of races during the season? Oh, it's a fun race. I mean, there's usually a little bit of uh, extra crowd. Some of the people that just come out to the fair don't normally come out to the races, and hopefully we get those people hooked into coming back and yeah. enjoying the night. Um, but it's, it's, it's up there. It's one of, uh, one of the bigger events, especially with uh, Midco being there and everything. 29 years of racing for you. What was the driving force of getting you into this sport to even begin with? Well, uh, when I was a little guy, my dad raced. Uh, I think he raced for 12 to 15 years. Um, I remember being little, begging him, just let me drive that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was uh, 13 years old and we were out at Buffalo River one day and he was testing his engine. They got special permission to be out at the racetrack. And, uh, I don't even know if you asked my mom, but my mom was standing there and she said, he said, hop in there and make a few laps. And I think we did about, I don't know, 75 to 100 laps that day. And that was, I can still remember every part of it. It was a lot of fun. Unbelievable. Crazy how, how early you could get started. And I can see your son's right there too. Is, yeah. that, is that kind of going to be the same? Well, he, he thinks so. I hope I can <laughs> afford it. <laughs> but uh, no, he's racing go-karts right now. We do that on Wednesday nights. So we have a pretty busy racing schedule of, of getting go-karts ready and keeping our stuff ready. And like you say, last week we had four schedule or four races on the schedule. So sometimes it gets pretty hectic. Now you say that you can remember doing all of those laps there and that feeling that you had then, 
Is it the same one 29 years later? Is that what still kind of keeps you going or does it feel a little different? Uh, I think what keeps me going and a lot of other guys going is just these things are so easy to look at and put together and yep. and they're just never hardly ever the same uh, when you go out to set them up and read in a racetrack. I mean you can kind of get close but you never get perfect and and the competition like I said with the five or six guys that really keeps it going and um, it's just exciting with the, when you get that kind of level of competition. Nine time NOSA champ, as I've learned today, one co-champion. Yeah. When you hear that, and you talked about just your history of racing, how does that feel to just hear you're a nine time champion and a co-champion and still still out there and still crushing it? Uh, you know, a lot of the points championships we just never really focused on trying to get, but we ended up getting them. Um, I don't, I, really, I don't really ever look at points during the year. I mean, we go out there each night and try to do the best we can. Uh, you know, first through fifth, we're, if we have a good night and we raced hard and, and we had a good race or a good fun race, I get out of the car and I'm just as happy as sometimes as if we had won. We appreciate you having us here. Congrats on all the success so far. Wish you nothing but success the rest Thank of the Thank you way. very much. Now, Nygaard is off and running toward that 11th NOSA title. He's finished fourth or better in all six NOSA races so far this season, which includes those wins at Devil's Lake and Norman County. Well, River City's wrapped up its divided doubleheader on Sunday evening. Find out who finished fair week on a high note when we come back. Most drivers would be reasonably pleased with two wins and seven straight top 10 finishes to start their season. But until last week, there was one thing missing for Dustin Strand, and that was a visit to Victory Lane at River City Speedway. Sunday, Strand looked to make it two in a row at his hometown track. Strand would get his chance in the last race of the night. We'll start with the Midwest Modifieds. 21 would start the race. But the field gets a little lighter in turn one. Seven cars involved, and two of them were done for the night. Pole setter Eric Hogland led the field back to green, and he'd ride the bottom to build an early lead over the 188 of Hunter Hogarth. Later on, though, Hogland elects to switch his line, and that decision would get tested late. Nate Reynolds made a hard push over the final few laps, but the high side rewards Hogland. He hangs on to get a contested wire-to-wire -wire win. Lightning sprints were back again Sunday, and it was a big night for Grand Forks native Zachary Kwiatkowski. He piloted the 17K past the two-car of Mike Schmiedberg a few laps in, and he'd pull away for a very meaningful first career win in Grand Forks. It was pretty special to have my parents in the stands. Um, fiance is working right now. I called her and told her he won. She didn't believe me, so hopefully we can send her some footage and show her it was real. I'm not making it up. Moving on to the late models now. Great starting spot for Strand on the outside of row one, but the start itself was even better. The 71 finds some serious speed on the top, which allowed Strand to open up a big lead in a hurry. It'd be tough to sustain that momentum in this one, though. Caution flags plagued the race in a big way. Only 12 of 21 cars actually made it through. Fortunately for Strand, the 71 was one of them. Strand dominates from start to finish to make it back to back at River Cities. Right at the end, there was about five to go. We got a yellow, and I was actually kind of hoping we were going to finish it off, but then. I caught the lap cars and the track was getting blocked and I thought, well, maybe a yellow would be good. And it, it did come out, so uh, yeah, we lucked out and sneaked, sneaked one in. We had more late model action at Rapids Speedway last week. Highlights and post-race reactions from Rock Rapids coming up next. The Lucas Oil Midwest Late Model Racing Association put together an ambitious 2019 schedule with plans to race 31 times over a seven-month span. Friday, the series made its way to Northwest Iowa for its first ever appearance at Rapid Speedway. Another good turnout in the stands in Rock Rapids and another strong showing from Dustin Gulbranson. The Sioux Falls native drove his number six hobby stock to the lead on lap two and he'd keep it out front the rest of the way. 
Gull Branson claims his second consecutive feature win at Rocky, giving him four straight overall. We just held up there and tried not making any mistakes, and the car was like perfect tonight, so couldn't ask much more out of my team, and they made the car work awesome. We just take it race by race, and whatever happens, happens. Hopefully we can keep it going. We've kind of been on a little roll here, so hopefully it just keeps going this way. The 16 MLRA late models rolled out next, 40 laps for a top prize of $3,000. But it was the fans who won early on. Great start for Tad Pospisil, who jumps from fifth to first at the drop of the green flag. Lap three, here comes Will Vaught. The current points leader goes inside to make the pass on Pospisil. But the 1V stay up front was even shorter. Next time around, defending series champ Chad Simpson charges past as they head down the back stretch. How about that? Five laps, three leaders. The three would be it. Unlike his predecessor, Simpson managed to lock down that top spot, and that allowed him to claim his third straight MLRA victory. The USRA stock cars did their best to match that excitement. First night out for pole setter Scott Overgaard, and a couple of his competitors really put him to work. Thomas Crocked was up first. The 15X gave the 40 all it could handle. Overgaard would get back to the front before the caution flag came out, but that brought a new challenger on the restart. Last week's winner, Chad Lonneman, took a couple of shots in turn two, but he can't quite get it done. Overgaard slams the door to get his first win in as many tries. I knew it'd be, uh, it'd be tough. There's a lot of fast guys here. Ended up racing side by side with a few of them for a while and I just tried to stick on the top and hopefully not mess up too bad and just kind of get a rhythm going. It, it, it uh, worked out for me. Darren Cordles loves racing at his hometown track so much that he found a way to do it more. We'll share the story behind his recent switch to the USRA stock car class when we come back. Midco Motorsports on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Speedway. Most community racetracks feature at least one hometown hero. At Rapid Speedway, that group has to include Darren Cordles. Midco SN's Elena Lanson gets the dirt on his illustrious career. Thanks, Jay. If you ever find yourself in a conversation about late model street stocks, Darren Cordles is definitely one name that should come to mind. But these days, Cordles is busy trying to master a different division. We caught up with the driver of the all-too-familiar 11K to find out how his new adventure is going. During the summer, there is one place where you could count on finding Darren Cordles every weekend, and that was at Rock Rapids Speedway. It started with my dad. He was an official here. So I guess I came to the races before I was a year old. And uh, my dad lived not too far from here, so I rode my bike around here when I was a kid. And uh, so yeah, I just, I've always done it. I started when I was 16 and now I'm 45 and I'm still doing it. While he's raced a number of different classes since the start of his career in 1991, he spent the most time in late model street stock cars. That's really where his name became synonymous with success. I grew up watching that class, wanting to, wanting to be, race Marty Barber, David Kruger, you know, Dana Gobronson, I mean those, Leland Gehring, they were my heroes, so I probably paid a lot of attention without realizing it. And we just, we just had a really good program, and and uh, yeah, we 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 raced a lot, and we had fun a lot, and yeah, we just had a lot of success. Cordell's definition of a lot of success is measured in championships. He's won 18 of them in 28 years of racing. About 180 wins all throughout the area, and and I think we're like at 18 championship somewhere in there. I guess I won championship in the B mod. The rest have all the rest have all been probably late model speed style. After collecting all of that hardware, Cordles decided last year it was time for a new challenge. He turned his attention to USRA stock cars, mostly out of opportunity. There's just more of them and they're closer to home. We talked it over, we we sold all our late model street stock stuff and and uh, Pro Chassis built us, built us this car, and like I said, it's been a learning curve, but yeah, that was, and I wanted to race here weekly. You know, it's nice to race in town. It's nice to have one show a week where you don't have to put $120 of fuel in the truck, and 
and uh, and that's always kind of nice. And we usually have decent success here, so that always kind of puts you in a good position for the rest of the weekend. From learning about the sport at Rock Rapids Speedway and now racing there almost every weekend three decades later, Cordles feels that his career has come full circle and hopes that he is able to pass down the sport he loves to the next generation as his father did for him. I don't know how many more years I'm, I'm going to do this. I really don't. And my son wants to do it someday too. So I think the next avenue after I'm done will probably be to help him and get him going. He's probably got the same passion I had. You just got to realize it. And, and I, I'd be all right with stepping aside if I could stay involved in that, that regard. My affection for this place is, is huge and forever. For Midco Motorsports, I'm Elena Lanson. All right, thanks, Elena. Cordles has yet to add to his win total at Rocky in 2019, although he does have three top fives to his credit. He's also currently second in the points. All right, that is our time for this week. Hope to see you back here next Wednesday night for another episode of Midco Motorsports.